It's good to see you all. Let's do this. Uh, welcome, everyone. It is such a pleasure to welcome you to our third annual conference. We received over 600 registrations this year, which we take as a sign of your growing interest in the, in the topic. This year's event is two days long, packed with different formats. We have two keynotes, demos by companies and agencies, discussions involving top academics and practitioners. In, in sort, we cover all of what computational antitrust can be. Now, before I dive into today's agenda, I'd like to give the floor to Roland Vogel, the uh, Codex Executive Director, whose support for the Computational Antitrust Project cannot be put in words. Roland, the floor is yours. Thibault, thank you so much. I'll be very brief. Um, I, uh, yeah, welcome to everyone. Uh, this is our third uh, annual computational antitrust uh, conference. Uh, Codex is a center here at, uh, at Stanford, a joint center between the Stanford Law School and the Stanford Computer Science Department. Our mission is to bring information technology to the legal system and make the legal system more efficient for all stakeholders. We're particularly focused on computational law the branch of legal informatics that concerns itself uh, with the automation of legal analysis. And uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is an area in computational law that's, uh, that's growing rapidly. And um, uh, much of it is uh, thanks also to, uh, to uh, uh, Professor Schreppel and his team uh, really driving discourse around computational antitrust. And so we're grateful for all the great work that uh, Thibault and his team are doing. Um, he's, uh, he's really done tremendous work and I think it takes both vision and grit to make uh, things happen. And so really appreciate all the great work you're doing and yeah, I'm wishing you all a, a wonderful conference today. Well, thank you so much. I guess the first surprise of this year conference is your French accent. This is quite perfect and I would not expect that you will pronounce Schreppel the exact French way, such as it should be. So <laughs> help being married to a French woman helps. So, but thank you. Yeah, that helps <laughs> indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, Roland, again, once again, as you know, and as everybody knows, if you've been here for the last two years, the, co the project wouldn't exist without you. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Um, okay. I take just a couple of minutes before I introduce Teodora Grossa, who's uh, more than central in uh, running the project. Um, as we discussed already, the Computational Antitrust Project is indeed three years old. Um, this year, we published six academic papers, organized a conference at the OECD. We released podcast episodes. We were quoted by the G7, the OECD, competition agencies, and we published an annual report in open access with contributions from 26 competition agencies. Now, a lot has changed since we introduced the project back in 2020. Generative AI is obviously everywhere. That is a computational tool, which is driving the point home for us. These tools can help and they, comes with, they come with challenges that deserve an academic take. Number two, agencies are showing teeth. They are building expertise and hiring computer and data scientists. We see that trend all over the world, which is quite telling. Three, there is a growing interest in related questions. I believe that the momentum is on our side. We see conferences being organized, research being published in different journals on the topic, and we see agencies engaging more and more with us. Now, looking ahead, my prediction is that in five years from now, every single agency in the entire world will be relying on computational antitrust. Now, of course, they will do so with different tools and with different levels of expertise. But now that some regions, including the EU, have adopted ex ante rules, the debate is moving towards the efficiency of those rules. And the obvious answer is computational antitrust. Computational tools are becoming indeed an absolute necessity, although it is probably not sufficient when it comes to understanding policies, detecting practices, 
analyzing those practices, enforcing remedies, monitoring the effects of antitrust, and assisting companies with compliance. When it comes to law firms, it will take longer, but we see that they are also moving in the direction of computational antitrust by relying on companies like the ones that we have invented to present tomorrow. So if computational antitrust is here to stay, let us make the best out of it. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. This is not the only time you will hear me saying that to receive our papers and videos. And now I would like to thank Teodora Grossa, our editor-in-chief, so very much for all the work that she's doing with us. Teodora, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Thibault. It's a great pleasure to work with you. And uh, I just want to say that I joined the team in 2021. And back then, the project seemed to be very much experimental. The atmosphere was more of trying to figure out what we can do and what's feasible. But as you just said, it's clear that we are here to stay and that we've achieved so much in the past three years. And this is visible not just in the big milestones, but also in small gestures, like getting a message on LinkedIn for a student who wants to write on the topic or get on board. So if there's anyone in the audience who would like to cooperate with us, we are more than open to find ways to get you on board. Make sure to get in touch. And uh, now, just because you focused on the future, I want to take a step back and see what we've done so far and what makes our project unique and what its key strengths are. So I think that in the first place, what makes us special is that everything we do is open access. And this shows a commitment to the fact that we believe that knowledge should be shared and know-how as well. And given the fact that computational tools are by their very nature replicable once they are developed and also easy to adjust to different circumstances, what we try to do here is also try to create a learning community where agencies that are less um, developed and which are understaffed or underfinanced or both can get to learn from those at the forefront of experimentation. And then, Something else that's happening nowadays, and that's something Thibault has mentioned, is that we see a lot of instruments being passed almost on a daily basis, which have a huge impact on competition and market structures. And by their very nature, regulatory tools are a step back in the sense that they are a move away from nuance and individual assessment to broad-based rules, which have presumptions. And I think that computational tools offer us an alternative of doing things differently and trying to inject more nuance into the assessment. And this is very much important, especially in the case of new technologies and new business models, where we cannot possibly know what the effects long term are. And we should be more cautious in terms of coming up with ex ante regulation and trying to experiment more with case by case analysis. And um, on that note, I'd like to wish you all a great two days of computational antitrust. I hope you learn a lot from us and that we learn a lot from you. I encourage everyone to participate in the Q&A as much as possible. And uh, I'll give it back to Thibaut now. Thanks so much for tuning in.